Perfect. All right. All right, everyone. Welcome back. We are at week five. Um, I'm going to share a few slides. And then we'll get straight into the exercise so that we can also let Jen get off at six. All right, so go to the first. Um, so today is part two of the resistance training for endurance. So we're gonna be using exercises to help build our endurance. Um, we did some introductory exercises last week. We'll do a few more that are familiar, introduce a couple new ones, and hopefully get your heart pumping, get your muscles working, and you won't feel too sore because you're a little bit more acclimated. Um, so for reminders for today, remember safety is your number one priority. Please be mindful of any side effects um, or effects that you might be feeling that you might be feeling even before you started the exercise, during the exercise, and even after. And these could include fatigue, any muscle pain that's abnormally high, um, any dizziness and shortness of breath. So please be mindful to take breaks as often as you need. Try the modified version. If you feel like the uh, regular version is a little bit too difficult, you can always make your way back up to the regular version after doing the modified. Uh, make sure you stay hydrated, have your water bottle nearby, we'll take some breaks. Um, and do what makes you feel good. Remember, exercise is meant to make you feel better. Um, while it, you do want to push yourself to make yourself work, um, it should never be such a miserable experience and a painful experience. Um, so do whatever you need to do to make sure that you're enjoying the exercise. Um, so just as a friendly reminder, what you're going to be feeling. So since we're doing resistance training for endurance, uh, you might feel a little bit more fatigued. Um, you might have an increased heart rate because we're doing a bit more dynamic movements with our strength training. So we'll do more repetitions um, and less rest in between. Um, you might feel some muscle soreness. And I think some of you did report that. Um, and that's good. That means that the there are adaptations and changes happening in that you are providing a stimulus to your muscle that wasn't there before. So that means there are positive changes happening. Um, however, you need to make sure that if you do have muscle soreness, you're giving yourself time to recover in between the days that you're doing these exercise sessions. And recovery is, is just as important as exercise. If we don't give ourselves proper recovery in terms of rest, nutrition, um, just you know, physical activity that's not resistance training, you're not going to be reaping as many benefits and you might be doing more harm than good. Um, and last, you might feel a little bit out of breath because we're moving a little bit faster and the movements are something that you're not used to and that's perfectly fine. Uh, don't be scared because you're feeling some adaptations happening. That means that your body is working um, and you're working towards making this particular movement easier in the future. All right. So just as a quick um, technique, we're refresh. Um, so what you wanna do and what you wanna make sure you remind yourself to do is that you're gonna exhale on the hardest part of the exercise. And you wanna inhale on the easiest part of the exercise. I know it's very counterintuitive and it's the opposite of what we think we would do, but it's just like any learned movement, you just have to practice doing it and tell yourself consciously. There is no rush to do the exercise. So if you need to take a second and think, Okay, as I'm pushing, I need to exhale, and if I'm pulling, I need to inhale. Um, so for example, um, Adeline here in example A, you wanna exhale as you curl the weight or the band towards you, all right? And that's the hardest part. And then you inhale as you lower the weight back down. Um, in example B, for the um, leg press, you exhale as you exert and push your leg away, and you inhale as you bring your knee back close to you and relax. And for a third example in picture C, you can see Adeline is, when she's hinging at her hips, she wants to inhale. And as you exhale, you squeeze your glutes back to center. So every time you exert on the hardest part of the exercise is when you wanna exhale and then inhale on the easiest part. Um, so again, we're just going to keep reminding you about the self-progression refresher because we wanna make sure that you're exercising in between our Thursday sessions and making sure that you are challenging yourself enough so that you can feel those adaptations. So just quick reminders that you wanna sandwich upper and lower body exercises, meaning that you wanna do one upper body, one lower body, upper body, lower body, to give yourself a break and give yourself time to kind of move through the movements. Um, try not to resistance train multiple days in a row, especially if you're feeling a little bit sore, it's okay to take rest days. And on those rest days, you can do other types of exercise whether it's flexibility or aerobic training, such as you know um, cycling, uh, uh, running, jogging, or going out for a walk. Uh, make sure you're doing a proper warm up of about two to four exercises and one or two stretches at the end. Again, this is to 
uh, increase your heart rate and body temperature for your warm ups, and then to decrease that heart rate and body temperature for the cool down. And that's to help minimize injury um, and soreness for the next couple of days. And remember to use the RPE scale. So that's the rating of perceived exertion. So on a scale of zero to 10, zero being it's super easy. This is requires no um, exertion at all versus 10. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. You wanna make sure you're scaling your exercises to a certain uh, range within the zero to 10. So when an exercise becomes a little bit easier, if you're going towards the zero to four end, that means that you might need to increase your weight. And if you're really tipping the scale at the eight to 10, that means that the weight might be a little bit too hard. And you might want to come down. So I think this, this table you've seen many times before, and it's, it's provided somewhere uh, as a resource. And I'm happy to post it again if you need to, if, if someone voices it. But this is as an example of how you should uh, time when you want to increase your weight based on how hard the exercise is. Um, and last but not least, I know Adeline every week suggests that if you did or did not enjoy today's session, uh, please post to the Happy Feet private page, da page dashboard and tell us exactly what you didn't enjoy. Maybe it's because, you know, we couldn't get the mechanics of the exercise right for you, or maybe there's another alternative exercise that we can provide for you that might be a little bit better. Um, or if there's a really an exercise you really like and you want to keep doing it, we would love to hear that so that for the next few sessions, week six and seven, we can incorporate something similar. Um, or maybe the exact same exercise, all right. All right, so now it's time to exercise. I hope everyone can grab their chair, grab their bands and their water bottle, all right? Let me exit out here. <clears throat> All right, any questions before we get started? Okay, great. So I am just one woman today, so please bear with me. I don't have my two assistants. Um, they are out today, so uh, I'm gonna be going back and forth from the camera, so just give me some patience. A lot of these exercises you should already know, so if you wanna get started without me having to cue you, I'm not gonna take offense to that. I want you to get all, as much exercise time as you can. So we're gonna do our warm ups today. First, I want to do calf raises, so uh, grab your chair, pull the camera. So you can see I have the chair just for a little bit of balance. We want, you don't want to white grip the chair, just maybe just your fingertips. You wanna go straight up on your toes, hold for two seconds and then come back down. And we wanna do 10 of those, up on your toes and come back down. So you exhale as you push up and then inhale as you come down. And remember, you don't wanna be looking down or straight up, you wanna look straight ahead. So you wanna do 10 of those. I'm looking from a distance, but everyone looks very good. If you don't need the chair, you don't have to use it. It's just more for a little bit of extra stability. And like I said, you don't wanna grip it too hard. You wanna just lay your fingertips lightly and let your body and your muscles hold you up and keep you steady, all right? If you need the modified version, all you have to do is just sit down into the chair at the edge and go straight up on your toes and hold for about two seconds. However, if you can stand up, I would encourage you to do these standing. All right. I'm looking, looking around. Remember, we're not holding our breath. We're not looking down, we're not looking up, we're looking straight ahead. Oh, I saw a couple of corrections, very good. Very nice. He's working our calf muscles, which are really important for balance and for proper walking me uh, mechanisms. Very good. Right. So as you finish those up, I'm gonna demonstrate the next one. You're gonna still use your chair, okay? And instead of going up on our toes, we wanna go up on our heels. So again, a very light touch with your fingertips. We wanna try to bring our toes up off of the floor and back onto our heel. It's very important for you to keep your sight forward because if you look down with this one or look up, you might have a higher chance of accidentally falling backwards. So again, pulling your toes up off the floor as high as you can, hold for two seconds and come back down. We're gonna do 10 of those. Don't hold your breath. Nice steady gaze in front of us. And don't worry if your toes don't come up all the way up off the floor. This requires some flexibility as well. And the more you do it, the higher 
your toes will be able to come up off the floor over time. And these work your um, tibialis muscles or your shin muscles, which are a very common um, muscle that needs, that's used for balance. And a lot of times as we get older, this muscle deteriorates and grows weaker. And that's why we tend to fall a little bit more or have a higher risk of falling with aging because we don't really work this muscle a lot. So I really like this exercise. All right, and if you, like I said, need to do it seated, just sit back down in your chair towards the edge and just pull your toes up off the floor, All right? And you wanna do 10 of those. Looking around, sorry. Any questions? One's looking good, I'm seeing a lot of moving bodies. Very nice, good. All right, as we finish those up, um, you can either do these seated or standing, depending on how you're feeling. We're going to do some neck circles. All of you are probably familiar with the neck circles. All right, so we just want to pick a direction clockwise or counterclockwise. And we want to bring our head nice and circles. No need to rush this one. Okay. If you, need, you, can't, if you cannot do the circles, all you, you can just pull your head down, push your head back. And then look right and look left. Do whatever is comfortable for you. So we're going to do five each in direction. Five to the left, five to the right. Very good. Go ahead and finish those up. Looking nice. Again, these don't have to be fast. We don't need to do it exorcism style, right? We're just nice, slow circles, getting some blood flow through those joints, lubricating those joints, making sure that we have full range of motion over time. Very nice. <clears throat> Good, all right. So for those of you, just go ahead and finish up. For those who are already done, we're gonna do our shoulder rolls. You can be seated or you can stand for these. Where we're gonna bring our shoulders up and around. Nice range of motion. We want to do five forward. Good. And then we want to do five backwards. For those who can't do um, the shoulder rolls, you can also do your wrist rolls. Nice circles. Or you can do both. Not at the same time, but you can do both. Get some nice blood flow. Get those joints moving and lubricated so they're not so stiff. So nice and easy. You do one at a time, whatever feels good for you. Looking good, very nice. I said five forward and five back, very good. All right, we're all good? Anyone have any questions before we get started? All right, okay. So the first one today, we're gonna to be doing standing marches. Um, this is a nice endurance-based exercise, but this will also be good for next week's session where we start to work on um, our balance as well. So we're doing strength training for balance. So uh, you can use a chair for stability if you like. Let me angle the camera so that you're not... All right, I'm trying to stay away from here. All right, so you can use a chair if you like. Try not to white grip it. I'm not trying not to white knuckle it. Very light touch. And standing marches, the objective is to get your knee as high as you possibly can. So I'm not going to touch the chair, but I'm going to put my hands on my hips for those who can do it. And you want to bring your knee up as high as you can. And you're just marching in place, alternating feet, just like that. Okay, and I'll do it in front, same thing. All right, we try to bring our knee up as high as you can. You don't have to feel like you're running. You do it as quickly as you think you can. If you feel like you need to do it seated or you need a modified version, you can absolutely sit down and try to bring your knees up as high as you can. However, if you think you can do it standing, I would encourage to do it standing. I want 10 on each leg. Okay? Very good. And it's important to keep our gaze in front of us for this one, especially when we're doing balance, because essentially you're standing on one leg for a period of time. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our balance correctly. Very good. 
And with time, with flexibility and endurance, you'll find that your knee will come up higher um, with each time because it does require some flexibility in our glutes and our hip flexors. So go ahead and do 10 of those on each side if you haven't already. I'm taking a look. Everyone looks good. We a little bit out of breath. You can nod your head if you are, because I'm a little bit out of breath. <laughs> Very nice. This looks good. And this, like I said, is a nice precursor to this exercise for next week for balance, because um, it'll work both endurance and balance. Very good. Do you need water? You can also get some water. Catch your breath for a little second, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, everyone looks ready. Okay, so the next one we're gonna be doing is chair lunges. I will go ahead and preface that. I think lunges are a complex and difficult exercise. However, I think they are such a great exercise that works so many different muscles. Um, and so I want you to make sure that you feel like you're doing it correctly and that you don't have to mimic the exact same movement I'm doing, but you do it to your comfort level because it requires a lot of different components to it. So just watch while I do it. So I like to start off with a chair just for stability. Lower the camera. Okay. Pull this forward. So I like the chair just for stability. I'm going to keep my feet about a little bit less than hip width apart. I'm going to pick one leg at a time. I'm going to go back with my left leg just because it's facing you. I'm going to place my back leg, my left leg down back, and I'm going to go straight down. I don't not I do not need to go down to the floor. Going down to the floor is not any more beneficial than going six inches off the ground or going two inches down. It does not matter. If you're more flexible and you're stronger, you can go to the ground. Great for you. Uh, that's not for me, and it might not be for you either, and that's okay. So we're going to go straight down and then come back up and foot back in. And then again, step back, straight down, come back up and foot back in. Your weight should be on the opposite leg that's standing still. So if my left leg is going back, the weight should be in the heel and the foot of my right. And I go straight down, come back and step back, okay? So you wanna make sure you go straight down as if again, like the squats, you're pushing the ceiling away with the top of your head. So straight back, go down a couple of inches, come back up and then feet together. So you wanna try five on each side and then go back up, perfect. If you want, I can watch and then we'll cue the next leg. Does anyone need a modification? Because I can absolutely show that too. Yes, modification, okay. So for those who are finding this a little bit too difficult, that's okay. Lunges are difficult, but very good. So let me pull my camera back down. So instead, um, also use a chair, feet together. I'm gonna step out with one foot. I'm going to bend the other leg and just push my butt back a little bit and come back up and then feet together. And then I'm gonna go to the other side, step out, bend my opposite leg, push my butt back and stand back up, right? Step out, push my butt back, bending my other leg, standing back up. Just like that. Good. Does anyone need some guidance, tips, questions, concerns, any pain? What are we feeling? Anyone need some help? Everyone looks really nice. Let's see. That is fair. So a lunge does take a lot of coordination. <laughs> I have been doing lunges for many, many, many years and it's still a coordinated act. Um, I think it takes practice and time. The modification will definitely help you with that motion. So keep doing the modified version if you can. And every now and again, maybe try just one lunge, one repetition. It doesn't have to be five or 10, but just try it so that your body starts to get into the movement of it. Because the lunge, um, while difficult, is very beneficial and works a lot of different components. So don't be afraid to just throw a couple in every now and again, just to see if the modified version is helping you to get to the regular lunge, okay? Everyone good? Is everyone done? You wanna catch your breath and get some water? I do. So feel free to do so as well. 
<laughs> Good. Okay. All right. So the next one, we're gonna be doing upper body. So remember we talked about sandwiching our exercises. So we just did a lower, two lower body exercises. Now we wanna to move to the upper body. Give your legs a little bit of break um, and relax. So I want you to grab your chair. We're gonna be doing the up, um, upright row. So you want a chair and you want a band, all right? I'm gonna sit down in this chair and I'll angle the camera for you, okay. All right, so you wanna take your band, you wanna loop, uh, loop it around your legs and bring it up to your lower thigh right above your knee, okay? Your feet a little bit less than hip width apart, palms facing down, grabbing the bands. And remember the upright row, uh, upright row we wanna pull our arms up. Oh yeah, I see people already starting, I love it. So I want you to do 15 of these. So remember we exhale as we pull up, so exhale, and then inhale as you relax. Exhale, inhale as you relax. So a couple things I wanna note for some people I see is that we don't wanna shrug our shoulders and then pull this up, right? We wanna keep our shoulders nice and steady and we're just using our arms to pull this up and we squeeze at the top. So instead of going like this and then pulling, we just want a nice movement, one movement with the arms. Perfect, very good. And we wanna go up. So Tina, I think you're going a little bit back. That's more of a row. This one is upright row, so go straight up. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Perfect, so 15 of these. Remember to exhale on the way up. If this is a little bit too hard, either give yourself a, a lighter band or take one leg out of the loop. Just loop it under one leg and it'll give you a little bit less resistance. If that's still a little bit too hard, you don't have to use a band at all you just mimic the movement with your arms and squeezing at the top, keeping your shoulders nice and still, but squeezing your muscles the arm, at the top. Which parts of the arm are you really feeling it primarily? Uh, I feel it in my shoulders, right here in my scapula, and then down my triceps. Thank here. you. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So 15 of that. Remember, exhale on the way out. And then as you relax, you take a nice little breath. Very good, very nice. Everyone looks really good. And remember, as time goes on and you get stronger and these bands get a little bit easier, you will be able to get that full range of motion. So if you can't get all the way up to your shoulder level and you can only get up to your chest or maybe your belly button, that's okay. Um, you'll eventually be able to get through the full range of motion. So don't force it if it's becoming really too, too difficult. Give yourself some leeway and know that you'll be able to work yourself what, uh, up to your shoulder level. Very good. All right, so I think we're done with 15. Very good. Everyone feeling okay? I don't hear otherwise. Oh, good question. Am I sitting back in the chair? My back is not against the back of the chair. I'm towards a little bit uh, uh, of the edge of the chair, just for some leverage. All right, okay. So we gave our upper, uh, our upper body a workout. We're gonna go lower body now. So this is a little bit of a newer exercise. This is called rising sun. This is more total body. So I'm not gonna use the chair. I'll show you the modified version in a second. See if I can get my whole body in the camera. So we're gonna start standing. Uh, this is as best as I can do right now. We're gonna start standing. And what I want you to do is, I want you to squat down, have your arms by your side, squat down. And then as you come back up, you will pull your arms back up as if you're the sun, right? So we squat down and we're swooping our arms back up as we stand straight up. Very good. Sight in front of us. And then we exhale as we sit, stand back up. So inhale going down, exhale coming back up. I want you to do 12 of those and then back up. So if you need the modified version, if you're, if you're okay with doing the standing version, continue. I'm gonna show the modified version now. I'm gonna have a chair, sit down in the chair towards the edge. And the same thing, I'm going to bend my body down, swoop my arms down. And as my arms come back up, I want you to extend a leg at the same time, right? And then relax. 
and then swoop my arms down. As I extend my arms up, I'm gonna kick out my other leg and squeeze my thigh and then relax, all right? Up and then extend, relax, up and then extend. And you'll do 12 of those. Ooh, everyone looks so good and tall. Very good. Remember, keeping our eyesight forward. We're exhaling as we stand back up. We're getting a nice stretch. We're using our legs to make sure we stand tall and not our backs. Remember, we're using our quad muscles, which is why we're building them up. Make sure you're aware of how you're feeling in your head. If you're feeling a little bit dizzy, you might feel a little bit out of breath, just like I am right now, and that's okay because you're really using all the muscles in your body. But if you're starting to feel a little bit dizzy, that's another sign that you shouldn't. So maybe take a break or either sit down and try to continue the exercise of sitting down if you're feeling a little bit dizzy. So just be aware of that when you're doing the exercises. Everyone looks so good though. Very nice. I hope you like that one I do. It helps increase the airways, the blood flows throughout the body. We stand tall. Very good. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna get some water, get some air, get some oxygen. <laughs> have our heart rate go down just a little bit. You don't have to jump right into the next exercise. You can always give yourself a break. For the endurance part, I usually try to do about 30 seconds to a minute in between exercises if I need it. But if I'm feeling good, I wanna jump in, you can absolutely jump in, but it's not a complete necessity, all right? All right, so we wanna shake out our muscles a little bit. So now we're gonna do an upper body exercise. It's called a lateral raise to a front raise. Um, we won't be using the bands for any of these. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to, put the camera down just a little bit. Okay. A lateral raise means that we're pulling our arms up, we come down, we go forward, we come down, and then we go all the way up and we come down. So to the side, like a T, and then to the front, parallel to the floor, and then we come back up. Perfect. I want you to do 12 of those. One, like this, and then back up. The modified version, you can absolutely take a seat and do these as well. And again, if you have some shoulder impingement problems or some neck impingement problems, just raise your arms as high as you can and eventually that range of motion will come back. So it doesn't matter if you can get the full way, as long as you try as, part, as much as you can to get to that portion. And then however high you can raise your arms, right? You're gonna feel this in your shoulders a lot. Our deltoids, our shoulder muscles, while they carry a lot of weight and they do a lot of things, they tend to be on the smaller side. So they're really good to work because we use them so often, right? You might feel a little bit in your traps up here, and maybe just a little bit in the back on your, uh, your scapula. Good. Anyone have any issues? We're looking good. Very nice. Very impressive. Take as many breaks as you want. I can see Tina's rolling out her shoulders, absolutely. Like I said, the deltoid muscles are, we use them a lot, but they tend to be on the smaller side. So if your shoulders are a little hurting, that's perfectly fine, roll them out, and then continue when you feel comfortable and they feel they don't feel so tense anymore. They're all looking very nice. Very good. Okay. Let you finish up your 12. When you're ready, just let me know. We'll go into our next exercise. Very good. Good, all right. I think most people are finishing up. Please grab some water, shake out your arms, especially if they hurt in the shoulder area, that's perfectly okay. Yeah, roll them out. We're gonna be doing a lower body exercise the next. Uh, for those who are already done, go ahead and grab a band. We're gonna be doing single leg extensions. So that's like kicking out our legs. So whatever band that you were using before, if you want to try a new weight, that's perfectly fine. So grab your band and grab your chair for those who are ready to set up for the next one. Okay. <clears throat> grab your chair. 
grab my chair, lower my camera. Okay. You're gonna take your band, you're gonna have a seat in your chair towards the um, front half of your chair. Take your band, put it around your ankles. Okay. Feet flat on the floor, a little bit less than uh, hip width apart. And remember, this is just like kicking a soccer ball out. So we're gonna do one leg at a time. We're gonna do 12 on each leg. You're gonna kick your leg out and you're gonna squeeze that thigh muscle. You wanna feel that big quad muscle and come back in. I want you to do 12 on the first side. Whether it's the right or left is up to you. Remember you exhale as you're kicking out. So and then inhale when you relax. So exhale as you kick out, squeeze that thigh muscle and then relax. All right, and I emphasize squeezing that thigh muscle because our, our quad muscles are made up of four, hence quad. And these are some of the largest muscle groups in our body, right? We use them so often. So it's really important that we engage them and remind them that we're using them and we need them. So it's important to squeeze them to let them know that they're being worked. So 12 on the right and then 12 on the left or 12 on the left and 12 on the right, whatever. Uh, order you were going in, okay? Wanna make sure we're sitting nice and tall, no hunching with our shoulders, no looking down with our necks and craning, nice and forward facing, right? The modification to this, if this is a bit too hard, is either to take it down to the next, to the level below on your resistance band, or don't use a resistance band at all. You can absolutely take it off and just Kick your leg out and make sure you're squeezing that thigh when it's fully straight. All right. So again, 12 on each side. Perfect. Taking a look, I'm looking at a lot of different angles. Everyone looks good so far. Anyone have any pain? No. I think we're all looking really nice. You want to push yourself, try a little bit of harder. Uh, resistance band weight, or uh, go through the movements a little bit quicker too. That'll also challenge you. All right. Looking good. Are we all done? Okay, we're all done. Okay, so that was the first set of the exercise. I think we have more than enough time to run through them all over one more time. What do you all think? Yes? No breaks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, the first one is gonna be standing, oh, well, first of all, if you need to get water, please feel free to get some water, shake out your muscles. We're gonna go through all six exercises one more time, and then we'll do our cool down. So if you need to catch your breath, this is the perfect time to do so. Which reminds me, I should also be drinking some water too. All right. Okay, so if you remember, our first exercises are the standing marches. You can use your chair as a uh, stability um, tool, or you don't have to use a chair at all. You can just put your hands on your hips. So remember, straight forward looking, and we wanna pull our legs up as high as we can. And we're alternating legs as we both bring them up. So I want you to do 15 on each side. Remember to breathe, look forward, very good. And remember, if you do need the chair, you can absolutely use it with just light finger touches on it or just one hand. And if you, if you do need to sit down, absolutely need to sit down, you can absolutely do. Sit on the first part of the chair and bring your knees up as high as you think you can go. All right, 15 on each side. Very good, looking nice. Good. Okay. Very good. We feeling out of breath? Yeah, I see some nodding heads. Good, that's what I want. All right, next one is gonna be chair lunges. You can either do the regular, quote unquote, or the modified version. I'll again demonstrate both. Again, have your chair as your stability tool. Again, light touches, no white knuckling the chair because then you're just not doing as much work as you can. 
You're going to pick whichever leg you want to do first, either right or left. I'm going to pick my left to go back first. So step back, put my weight in my right leg, go down a few inches, come back up, feet together. And then use the same leg, go back down, come back up, and then feet together. I want you to do 10 on each side. I know that's a lot. Take your time. There's no rush. Step back, go down, come back up. If you can only do, uh, dip down just a few inches, that's okay. As your strength goes uh, up and your flexibility becomes more, you'll be able to go down uh, a lot further. So 10 on each side. Okay. I'm gonna demonstrate the modified version again. Again, light touches on the chair. You want your feet together, you wanna to step out with one leg, and then the opposite leg you wanna bend and then push your butt back. Then feet together, step out the opposite way, bend your leg, butt back, feet together. So pick whichever one is comfortable for you and do 10 on each side. Very good. Looking at some form here. Very nice. Good. Remember, we're breathing. Nice big inhales and exhales. If your heart rate is increasing, that's good. It's working. That means our blood is pumping to our muscles that we're using. And that's a good sign. Again, be very cognizant of if you're feeling out of breath because you're working or if you're feeling dizzy because something else and make sure you take as many breaks as you need. You don't have to rush through the exercises. I will say as a uh, disclaimer, you might feel this one tomorrow and that's okay. It's a good kind of soreness. I love doing lunges and I hope you do too. All right. I see people are finishing up. Please absolutely grab some water. Take some deep breaths in if you need to. Recirculate that blood, get that oxygen in. All right, shake out your legs if you need to. Grab your chair for those who are done and ready to move on. We're gonna be doing the upright row. So grab a chair on whatever band that you wanna use. Okay. All right. So sit down towards the first uh, front half of your chair. Grab your band up around your legs to the oops, uh, lower thigh, right above your knee. Okay. We're grabbing our band and we're going straight up. Exhale as we pull up. Remember, we're not shrugging our shoulders. We want to use straight strength from our arms and our accessory muscles in our back. Remember, exhale as you pull up and then back down. I want 15. So go ahead and do 15 of those. Again, if you can pull it all the way up to your shoulder uh, chest area, that's perfectly fine. Down here is okay. And it was fine, you'll get better. Is our back, um, is our back supposed to be in, back at the back of the chair or halfway? No, we are sitting halfway towards the front half of the chair. Halfway front half, okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, which brings to a great point. Make sure you're setting up nice and straight. We don't want any curled backs or shoulders. No neck craning looking down. We always want to be looking forward, right? I'm looking at you. You're looking at something else. Okay. Very nice. 15. Remember to exhale on the way out. Nice inhale when you relax. Looking very strong. Very nice. Again, if you need the modified version, you just take one leg out of the band. And if that's still a little bit too difficult, you don't need to use the band at all. You just want to mimic the movement with your arms and make sure you're squeezing on the way up. You should feel it in your arms and a little bit in your back. You're squeezing. Very good. 15. Those who have done 15, why don't you go ahead and roll out your shoulders a little bit. Shake out your arms some blood flowing. For those who are ready to move on, uh, you can go ahead and just move your chair to the side a little bit. For those who are finishing up, no rush. Shake out your muscles. I'm just gonna describe, we're gonna be doing the rising sun. So I'm just gonna demonstrate again, when you're 
ready, you can join in and I want you to do 12 of them when you're ready to join. So we're going to uh, shake out our arms. We're gonna squat down and we're gonna swing our arms back up and then squat down as we stand up, swing our arms back up. So remember we're using, we're using the power in our legs to push our body back up to standing tall like a mountain. Swing down as low as you can, squatting down as low as you can, and pushing back up. Very good. I'm going to demonstrate. You're going to do ahead and do 12 of those, and I'm going to demonstrate the modified version for those who need it. You're going to grab your chair, sit towards the front half. You're going to swing your arms towards the floor, bring them up towards the ceiling, and then kick out one leg and squeeze the thigh muscle. And repeat towards the floor. Floor, bring his arms up towards the ceiling and then kick out the other leg. You want to do, um, I'm sorry, six on each side if you're doing it seated and 12 all together if you're doing it standing. Very good. Remember, we're using the power in our quads and our thigh muscles to push our body up to standing nice and tall. Very nice. This one again is called Rising Sun and everyone looks very good doing it. If you're feeling out of breath, that's a good sign because I am too. No one is immune to exercise, so it's a good sign. It means your body's working, it's pumping the blood, it's, at, it's engaging those muscles and using them for exactly the purpose of this exercise. Very nice. Very good. All right, grab some water if you need to, shake out your muscles, expand your chest if you want to grab some more oxygen as well. Very good. Very nice, very nice. All right, shake it out. Deep inhales, deep exhales, give you a little bit of a break. And again, if these exercises are becoming easier, I'm glad you can always up the uh, number of repetitions that you're doing it or increase the pace at which you're doing these exercises too. So you get to choose how you make it harder um, as long as you make sure that you're making it harder over time, right? Um, so that you're gaining more and more benefits as you're doing it. Okay, next one is going to be the arm raises. So let me lower my camera a little bit. So we're going to do these standing. I, I would encourage you to do them standing if you can. If you need to do it seated, absolutely do that. So arms out to the side, arms out to the front, parallel to the floor, then arms up straight to the ceiling. Very nice. Arms up to the side like a T, to the front, and then to the ceiling. Again, to the side like a T, to the front, perfect and then to the ceiling. Wonderful. Like I said, you should feel it in your shoulders, a little mm -hmm. bit in your upper back shoulder muscles right here. Again, look forward, try not to crane your neck one way or another. It's okay if your arms can't go all the way um, to the stop point as other people. As you move through the exercises over time, you'll be able to get your arms up higher. And that's what we're working towards because that means your muscles are able to move through that range of motion, all right? I don't think it says how many. We're going to do 12 of these. So each of these exercises, one, two, three, is one repetition. So you want to do 12 of those. And again, if you need the modified version, just go ahead and have a seat in your chair. Whoops. <laughs> Towards the front part of your chair. And you just want to do the same exact exercise. Perfect. Very nice, squeezing those muscles as we're reaching towards the top, the side, and the front. Take as many breaks as you need. Shake out your arms if you need to. Roll out your shoulders in between. Whatever you need to do to feel comfortable doing it. And that you can finish the 12. Very impressive, very nice. Looks very good. Don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to take in that oxygen. Very good, looks very good, very impressive. Good. 
Like it a lot. Very good. All right. Um, for those of you who are already done, if you want to grab some water, if you're okay without water, you're going to be doing the last exercise, which is a single leg extension. So go ahead and grab your chair and your band of choice. If you want to try a little bit of a harder band for this last repetition or last set, I encourage you to. If you're comfortable where you were before, that's also fine as well. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and grab your chair and your band. No rush to get to the exercise. I'm just going to demonstrate. And when you're ready to join me, you can absolutely join me. So, all right. Turning my chair. Turning, uh, ha sitting on the front half of the chair. And we're going to put our band around our ankles. Okay. Feet flat on the floor. Remember, pick whatever leg that you're going to be starting with. You want to do 15 on each side, okay? 15 left, 15 right. When you kick out, you want to squeeze those thigh muscles and hold it at least two seconds and then come back down. You don't have to alternate feet like I'm doing. So you want to do 15 on one side and then 15 on the other, whatever's easiest for you to count. But as long as you have a nice straight posture, we're looking straight ahead and we're exhaling as we kick out. Okay, exhale as we kick out. Inhale as we relax. On 15 on each side. And then kick out. Squeezing those thigh muscles. A lot of times I like to tell my patients to put their hand lightly on the thigh muscle. And you should feel a difference when you're kicking out because you should feel your quad muscles activating to be able to hold that, rubber, that elastic band out when you're putting tension on it. So if, you, so if you like some positive feedback from your own body, just lightly put your hand on your thigh. And when you kick out, you should feel your muscles working. It's a nice little reminder. And if it's hard enough, you might feel them all shake a little bit and that's okay too. 15 on each side, exhaling as we kick out. For the modified version, you can just take off the elastic band and just kick out without it and make sure you squeeze your thigh. You would do 15 on each side for that as well if you're doing the modified version. Right. Looking nice. Everyone looks good. Make sure we're breathing, exhaling as we kick out, inhaling as we relax. We're looking straight forward. Nice tall posture. We're squeezing that thigh muscle as we kick out. Make sure we engage the quad muscles. All right. Very good. Very good, all right. So we've done two sets of six exercises, which is so, so impressive, honestly. So I hope you're feeling it. A little bit of elevated heart rate, a little bit of sweat maybe, well earned. So now we're gonna do our cool down exercises. Remember, it's important to do these. We wanna bring our heart rate, our blood pressure, and our body temperature back down from where we were exercising. And that'll help us with recovery and reduce the risk of injury, okay? So never skip your cool downs. Um, you can do these sitting or standing. I'm just gonna do standing for purpose of the camera. So we're gonna do our cross body stretch. We're gonna shake out our arms, pull one arm across our body, the other right above the elbow and pull towards us. You should feel a nice stretch in your triceps right across your upper arm. The thing with stretches is about 15 to 20 seconds at least. And that's uh, the amount of time your body needs to understand that, oh, I should be relaxing this muscle. Make sure you're breathing, especially during cool down exercises. No need to hold your breath. The breathing is actually the signal to the brain that helps it to tell it, oh, we're relaxing now. Okay, good. You take out that arm, pull the other arm across the body and pull with the other arm, perfect. Beautiful, that's very good. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to shake out that arm. We're gonna do one more on the other arm, on each arm, one more time. Remember to breathe nice and easy. If you can't stand for these, that's perfectly fine. You can sit down. There's no requirement to stand for these stretches. Nice and easy. Good. Shake out your arm. 
One more time on the uh, opposite arm. And usually the second time around you do these stretches, you feel like you're stretching a little bit more because now your brain is like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing now. And if you're breathing through them, you'll find you have a little bit more flexibility and range of motion the second time around you do these. So that's why I encourage you to do at least twice for the cool down stretches. For those who can't do these, you can also just do some wrist stretches where we pull down with our fingertips. You could do this in addition to as well. Nice stretch through the forearm. This feels nice after sitting down at a computer all day, right? Shake out your arm and then do on the opposite side, pull down with our fingertips. Nice and easy and we're breathing through these as well. Very good. Should feel a nice stretch through your forearm here. Okay, very nice. So let's shake out our arms and our forearms and our hands and wrists. The next is gonna be a neck stretch. So we're going to gently take our right hand, uh, push down on the back of our head to the right, uh, on the right hand side and push down. And hold that for about 10, 15 seconds. If you feel like you don't wanna push down in your neck, that's perfectly fine. You can just hang your head and let gravity push down very slowly. But if you are able to gently push down your neck, you should feel it in the base of your skull, down your neck, towards your shoulders. Oh. Oh. Very good. Go ahead and relax. And we're gonna do the opposite side. Using the left hand, pressing down in the back of uh, the head on the left side, then pulling down. Again, the modification is if you can't pull down with your arm, that's okay. Just hang your head and uh, your chin towards your chest and let gravity take take over and pull your uh, neck down to stretch it naturally. Good. Okay, very good. All right, so we're gonna grab a chair for this next one. We're gonna stretch our hamstrings. So I'm gonna show you two versions. If you don't need to do it seated and you're comfortable standing, um, the very, very old typical way is just, hold on a second, just standing with your feet together and just very slowly as you exhale, going to try to touch your toes. If you feel comfortable doing this standing, if you feel like, oh, I'm a little bit unsteady, I will show you the modified version. But if you're okay doing this and trying to touch your toes, you should feel the stretch in both of your hamstrings, which are on the back of your legs. If you can't touch the floor yet, that's okay. Flexibility takes time. You wanna hold it for about 15 seconds and do it two times. So I'm gonna show you the modified version right now. So if you can't do it standing, which is fine, you're gonna take a seat in a chair towards the front half. One foot is gonna stay planted. I'm going to keep my right leg, on, uh, right foot on the floor. I'm going to extend my left leg with my heel on the floor and my toes looking towards the ceiling. I'm gonna take a deep breath in and then I'm going to reach, exhale and reach for my toes. And I will feel the stretch in the back of my leg. So again, one foot planted on the floor, one extended straight out with the heel and the toes looking up. And I'm going to inhale. And as I exhale is when I go down towards my toes. You wanna hold that for about 15 seconds. Okay. And after that, you want to alternate legs. So switch, switch, other leg with the heel on the ground, toes towards the ceiling. I want to inhale. And then as I exhale, that's when I go towards my toes. All right. You want to do two on each side for about 15 seconds, holding it. But if you're able to stand and touch your toes, that also works the same thing for stretching your hamstring muscle, muscles, whatever is comfortable for you. Okay. Good. All right. Last one we're going to do is the chest stretch. You might remember this where we're trying to connect our hands behind our backs and we want to open up our chest and look up if you're able to. Okay. All right. Inhale and exhale. We want to just open up those chest muscles, which will feel nice especially if we've been sitting down and rolling our shoulders towards the front. I'm going to show you the modified version. And so instead, if you can't do that, you wanna take one arm against the wall, 
and then you want to turn your body the opposite way. You feel it here in your chest. And then you would turn the opposite way and try it on the other arm, whichever is most accessible, accessible for you. Looking great. All right. Right on time, 558. You did, everyone did so incredible today. I'm so, so, so impressed. I hope you're proud of yourselves. That was not an easy workout. Just <laughs> demonstrating it made me out of breath and I didn't even do all the repetitions that I know you all did too. So I'm very, very, very impressed. I want you to try and practice this at least one to two times between uh, today and next Thursday. I will be posting this handout tomorrow morning. If, I know we don't have much time for questions, but if you do have additional questions, you can reach out to us on the dashboard and we can answer in more specifics and more detail if we can't get to your question today. Um, but I hope that you have time to practice. I hope that you're a little bit sore tomorrow just because you deserve it because it's good. It means it's working and that you did the work today. All right. So give yourself some rest, but also try, like I said, one to two times between uh, today and next Thursday. Do you have any last minute questions? Okay.